Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Coming up, we get you ready for a busy dirt racing weekend that includes the National Open at Williams Grove, races for Lucas and the Outlaw Late Models, USAC Sprint Cars in Indiana, and more. I've also got news from Scott Bloomquist and Ashton Winger to share as well. Before we get going, if you'd like a free and easy way to support what I'm doing, you can subscribe and follow the show and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you watch or listen. That will ensure you don't miss future episodes and will help others find the show. You can also follow at Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And DirtTracker.com is home to a bunch of cool dirt racing content, including analytics, updated news, and a whole lot more. Now, let's do this. The final Sprint Car Crown Jewel weekend of the year is upon us with the National Open at Williams Grove getting underway tonight. We'll get two full programs for the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars versus the Pennsylvania Posse with tonight paying 10000 to win and tomorrow paying a very nice 75000 to win. On top of the usual suspects for the Posse and Outlaws, plenty of other big names are going to be in attendance trying to bag the big money. That includes Kyle Larson back in a sprint car with Paul Silva and the 57, Darren Pittman behind the wheel of the Swindell Speed Lab 39, Justin Peck in the pink Kramer Williamson tribute car, plus the debut of Spencer Baston with CJB Motorsports, Gio Selzy, and Justin Henderson driving for Bernie in the Indy Race Part 71. So far in 2021, we've had four outlaw races at the Grove and four different winners. Carson Macedo and Aaron Reitzel split the May weekend with Sheldon Huddenshield and Brent Marks bagging wins in July. Donnie Schatz is the defending National Open winner, while Brent Marks won the event in 2019 and Lance DeWeese won it in 2018. I have 17 World of Outlaws races at Williams Grove in the DirtTracker.com analytics database, and Larson has the best average finish of any driver at the Grove in that span. His average is fifth, but he's only made four outlaw appearances at the Grove since 2018, and he doesn't have any outlaw wins there. Larson's three career sprint car wins at the Grove have come with the All-Stars and PA Speed Week competition. Behind Larson, David Gravel has an average finish of 5.6, Donnie Schatz of 6th, Lance DeWeese of about 7th, and Pittman is about 7.6. The win prediction formula does favor Larson for the weekend, but just barely over Gravel and Schatz. Central PA is notoriously a down area for series points hitter Brad Sweet, and Williams Grove is certainly part of that. He does not have a Grove win in his career, and his best finish there is 3rd, which has happened multiple times. Over those 17 uh, Williams Grove races in the database, Sweet's average finish is just a tick north of 10th. That's a big deal when you consider that Sweet's average finish with the Outlaws over his previous 268 races is 5.3. The Grove is definitely a problem for the big cat. If Gravel is going to make a really serious late charge for the Outlaw Championship, he absolutely must make up big ground this weekend. Another driver to keep an eye on for the big money is Carson Macedo. He won at the Grove back in May, like I mentioned, and the 41 with David Gravel in it the past few seasons always ran well there. So you know crew chief Philip Dietz has a good notebook. If he could get it done, this would be a massive victory for Macedo in his young career. If you can't be at the Grove this weekend, make sure to tune in both nights live on Dirt Vision. With things looking better and better for Tim McCready to wrap up his first ever Lucas Championship, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is headed to Ohio and Pennsylvania this weekend. Tonight, they're at Raceway 7 for 12 grand to win before heading to PA tomorrow for the 33rd annual Pittsburgh 120,000 to win. With Jonathan Davenport forced to set out the Brownstown weekend last week with a positive COVID test, he's now out of contention. And McCready leads Hudson O'Neill by 340 points with just six features remaining. McCready stays as consistent as he's been so far this season. He'll cruise to the championship. Lucas hasn't raced at Raceway 7 since 2019, and Kyle Bronson will be looking to repeat his win from that event. He topped McCready and Josh Richards that year after Jimmy Owens dropped out late. As for the Pittsburgher 100, Ricky Thorne Jr. is the defending winner. He led the final 18 laps in 2020 and beat Richards and Earl Pearson Jr. for the $20,000 score. It's been a rough stretch for RTJ lately with Lucas as he's finished outside the top 10 in six of his last eight starts. Saturday's race could be a good opportunity for him to get back on track with that SSI Motorsports team. We'll also be keeping an eye on Tyler Erb to see if he can stay hot as he's won three of the last six Lucas events, including last weekend at Brownstown and both Knoxville prelim nights. Both Lucas shows this weekend will be streamed live on MAV TV+. 
It's been nearly a month since they last raced, but the World of Outlaws light models are back in action this weekend in the south with stops at Cherokee Speedway tonight and Sonoya Raceway tomorrow. As I talked about yesterday, Rocket Racing and Brandon Shepard are headed for their fourth title in five seasons. And from here on out, it's just about race wins for the rest of the Outlaw competitors. Brandon Overton has dominated Cherokee with the Outlaws in recent seasons, including the most recent race there back on September 2nd. He also has wins in both 2020 and 2019 there. He's definitely going to be the one to beat tonight, that's for sure. As for Sonoya, the Outlaws haven't been there since 2018. Chris Madden was victorious back then. Shepard was also a winner there in 2017. Sonoya has gone through an ownership, uh, ownership change this year, and the track is being revitalized, so it's nice to see them rewarded with a national touring show. Other drivers that will be looking for their first outlaw wins of 2021 this weekend, which is very late in the season. That list includes rookie Tyler Bruning, top five runner Ricky Weiss, and rookie Ryan Gustin. All have shown speed this season and are capable of winning. A little surprising to see some of those guys without outlaw wins. Both of these outlaw nights will be available to watch live on Dirt Vision. In some late model team news from yesterday, Scott Bloomquist Racing announced that following the conclusion of the 2021 season, Bloomquist and business partner Cody Summer will part ways following a three-year partnership. Summer is known for his work getting events like the Gateway Dirt Nationals off the ground and for briefly running at Mansfield Motor Speedway as a dirt track and holding events like the Dirt Million. Summer partnered with Bloomquist in 2019 and Summer was named team president. The release from the team says they are parting, quote, cordially and mutually, unquote. Bloomquist is not retiring, and the team plans on continuing to operate in the future. Bloomer still has races left on his schedule this season, including the upcoming Lucas events at Smoky Mountain, Dixie, and Rome. Nick Hoffman is also still scheduled to make some appearances for SBR as well. There was nothing in the release about the future for summer. And speaking of summer, there's still plenty of question marks surrounding this year's Gateway Dirt Nationals. The event did not happen in 2020, and I'd say 2021 is still maybe a little bit in question. Cody tweeted back on September 14th that the event was going to happen and that there'd be news in the next 10 days, but those 10 days have come and gone with no updates. The event's Twitter account hasn't had any uh, post to it in several months, but I noticed this morning the avatar and header photo have been changed to include event dates of December 2nd through the 4th. When I checked the website yesterday, it also hadn't been updated this year, but also as of this morning, it now shows a black page with coming soon and the 2021 dates. So I'll have to uh, wait and see what happens here with the Gateway Dirt Nationals coming up. To see for yourself, you can hit up at Gateway Dirt on Twitter and GatewayDirt.com. Also, just this morning, it was announced that Ashton Winger has a new late model ride. Effective immediately, he will take over from GR Smith in the Broadnax Shaker Motorsports entry. Smith has been the team's driver and helping manage the team as a partner, and he told Dirt on Dirt's Kevin Kovac that following the double worlds at Eldora, he decided to reduce his driving commitment. Winger has been racing in his family-owned car this season and was very good with the Summer Nationals earlier this year, picking up multiple wins. He's also got two outlaw wins on his resume. According to Kovac and the team, Winger's first race with the team will be the Lucas Show at Smoky Mountain coming up, uh, but that a decision on their 2022 schedule is still in the works. For more details about the release and the story, visit DirtOnDirt.com. Back on the Wednesday Daily Show, we went through Brady, uh, Brady Bacon's 2021 season to date, and his pursuit of his fourth career USAC National Sprint Car Championship continues this weekend with stops at Terre Haute and Lawrenceburg. He currently leads Kevin Thomas Jr. by 71 points and Justin Grant by 112. Only seven nights and three weekends remain on the 20, uh, 2021 schedule for the USAC Sprint Cars, and this weekend's shows are the final in the Midwest for the year. Following Terre Haute and Lawrenceburg, the series heads west for stops at Paris Auto Speedway and Arizona Speedway in November. Tonight at Terre Haute, besides the championship chasers, Chris Windham will definitely be the one to keep an eye on. He's won three of the last five series trips to the track and has seven total wins at Terre Haute in his career, which is the most of any active driver, and he's second all-time. Interestingly, though, Wyndham has been winless over his last 24 USAC sprint races, going back to his Terre Haute win back in May. He's uh, had plenty of good runs since that last win, but this could be a good night for him to bust that streak. Other drivers with recent wins include Justin Grant and Logan Seavey, who was victorious in July during Indiana Sprint Week. Seavey is also the most recent winner at Lawrenceburg, where the series will travel to on Saturday for 10,000 to win. 
Bacon has a win at the Berg in 2021 as well, and he's won two of the last four races there, so it could be a good opportunity for him to extend that championship lead. Your interesting USAC Sprint Car stat of the day involves the start position for series winners in 2021. We've had more winners from sixth than we have from second. That's six wins versus five wins. And we've had no winners who've started seventh, but two that started 11th. If you can't be at Terre Haute or the Berg this weekend, you can watch live on Flow. If you're looking for some midget action this weekend, the Power Eye National Midgets are headed to Sweet Springs Motorsports Complex in Missouri for two shows. We're down to the final seven nights of their season, and the championship chase has turned into a nice fight between two youngsters from two of Midget Racing's top teams. Bryant Wiedemann driving for Keith Coons and Pete Willoughby is the points leader with Brent Cruz of Chad Boat Industries 90 points back in second. Wiedemann has a win, 13 top fives, and 21 top tens in 24 features, while Cruz has four wins, 15 top fives, and 19 top tens in the same number of races. This will be a fun battle to the finish between two of Open Wheel Racing's future stars. Following this weekend at uh, Sweet Springs, the series has races left at Port City, I-44 Riverside, and Caney Valley. All of the Power Eye National Midget races can be watched on MAV TV+. And if you weren't aware, the Power Eye rules are a little bit different than USAC, and if you want a place to see some of these younger drivers and future talent, Power Eye is a great series to check out. The age requirement is more relaxed, so uh, drivers can get some experience in a midget with Power Eye and race at some great tracks through the Midwest. A lot of the drivers you are seeing today in USAC and in winged racing spent time in Power Eye in years past, including guys like Justin Peck, Logan CV, Buddy, uh, Buddy Kofoy, Tanner Thorson, Spencer Basin, and Carson Macedo. Uh, so definitely a good place to check out. There are 27 shows on the streaming schedule for today, with most of the streaming services having something going on. The rundown includes the National Open on Dirt Vision, Lucas Late Models on MAV TV+, World of Outlaws Late Models, USAC Sprint Cars at Terre Haute on Flow, and a whole lot more. To see the full daily streaming schedule through the weekend, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Drop me a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Let me know where you're headed to this weekend, what you're going to be watching on the streaming services, what your win predictions are. Uh, certainly love to hear from you guys on this Friday. That uh, That's it for the show today. Hope you do have a good Friday and a good weekend. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in this week. We'll be back on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily.